Which is the best electric mountain bike for you riders? Whether you're a seasoned mountain biker or just a beginner, we are gonna check out all the different styles of e-bikes and what works for you. Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today we are looking at what is the best electric mountain bike for you riders. And we all know every rider out there is different, so I've got a little bit of help from my friends. Come in, guys. We've got Pablo and Martin. Thanks for your time, rider legends. Thanks for having us. And we thought, well, I thought this would be a really interesting test because these guys are the e-bike virgins, and I put them on the Rolls Royces of e-bikes. And first of all, Pablo, is 47 years young. He's been riding his whole life. And Martin is 25, the young gun, but he's also been riding for about 10 years. And I hate to say it, riders, these guys are faster than me. So we are in good hands here. Over the last month, we've been all out testing these e-bikes. So in this video, we're gonna do mini reviews of each, and then we're also gonna chime in on which e-bike is our favorite. And before we crack on with the bikes, a massive shout out to Quadlock. I've been using Quadlock for the last 18 months. I absolutely love it. On my bike, in the home office, in the camper van, and now in the kitchen, when I'm cooking with the mag case, I, I click it onto the fridge and it stays there, and I listen to my favorite podcast. And riders, 10% discount code for all you legends in the show notes, check it out. I wanna say as well, like, I am in such a privileged position to have these bikes, and it makes me feel good that I let you guys ride it like, you know, it, it really is something that I like to share. And also, I don't claim to know everything about mountain biking. Like, I know a fair bit and, you know, I have a channel and all that stuff. But you guys add more, like, every ride is different. And I was hoping with this, each rider that's watching this can resonate with a different style. Like, younger, fitter, more like, an, you know, a veteran e-biker. What are the virgin e-bikers riding? Pablo, what are you riding at the moment? Yeah, at the moment I'm riding an Ivy's Remo, an aluminium frame. Uh, it's uh, 160 at the front, 147 at the back. It's a uh, trail enduro. Nice bike. But, yeah. And what about you, Martin? So my current bike is a Commensal Meta AM 2021. It's more of an enduro bike, a hard enduro bike. 170 at the front, 160 at the back. Pretty full on bike. 29ers, yeah? 29 front and back. That's a perfect segue to start with the Kinevo SL, which is rolling on 29ers. 170 at the front, 170 at the rear. We have the Specialized SL 1.1 motor with the 35 Newton meters of torque, and it's coming in around 19 kilos. Now, the young gun, Martin, how did you find it? How did this bike ride? For me, uh, we bonded really well from the start. As, as you said, uh, 29 front and back, just like my personal bike. I really liked that. And it was more travel, which I'm also more used to. So I really liked it from the start. Did it have enough power? I don't know, trying the other bikes, uh, I think it was a little bit less power than I needed. It still got me up the hills, but it definitely took me more time and more effort. Yeah, fair enough. And what about the range? The range, I've always ridden it with the range extender, so I didn't really run out of battery, but I did notice that if I did a couple more laps, I would have had to go get a recharge. Okay, fair enough. So just to give a little insight to the riders, where we all ride is like this, it's super steep. So yeah, I understand. I was getting on the Kinevo SL with the range extender, about 1,400, 1,500 meters of vertical climbing. So what would you say the best and the worst thing of the Kinevo SL is? So for me, the best part would be the speed. It's a big bike, it has a lot of travel and it holds speed really well on fast tracks. And the worst probably would be the power. I feel I could get a little bit more power and it would be much better for me. Okay, perfect. And on to you, veteran mountain biker. How'd you get on on the Kinevo SL? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoy all three bikes. Uh, the first one I tried was the, the Kinevo. Yep. And as Martin said, it's uh, amazing going downhill. It's yep. noticeable that it's made for going down. If you're doing trails, various step trails or, or bike park or this kind of stuff, it's perfect and obviously. And what about the power? Did you find it enough power? Um, I mean, it's enough if you're powerful enough, is your feet, or is your... Like you. <laughs> <laughs> or is your riding with, with buddies, with non-bike uh, bikes? Yeah. No, it's maybe a pretty good choice. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And what about the range? Did you like the range on this yeah, bike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all uh, made a, a, a ride, all three, with the bikes. I used the range extender, 
but I had uh, one third left at the end of the yeah, yeah. of the ride, so it would be perfect. And I could make it more than three hours with no problem. That's because you're a fit guy. And best and worst, what do you reckon? Uh, it's, the best is, is downhill. It's a, it's a weapon. It's a and weapon the worst? Going down and, the, and the worst climbing, Yeah, for real. It's, yeah. it's, it's more sluggish uh, going uphill. It's, All right, well, I'll chime in now. I've had this bike for two years. Absolutely love it. I reckon it is a bike that comes into its own in a bike park. Can be a little bit lethargic when you're not going like full gas. And also I like to describe it like about six months ago, I was riding my mate Yoba, who was on a stunt jumper and I was following him. And it was like, I watched him riding and the bike was like crazy. Like it looked like he was listening to punk music and just holding on for dear life. And on the Kinevo, I was in second gear listening to classical music. This bike has so much in the tank. But I reckon for my style of riding, the 35 Nm of torque probably is not enough. And like, I'm not the fittest rider out there. And Pablo is definitely the fittest rider out there. Well, in our group, and Martin's the fastest out of us. So I think he, I mean, the sound of this bike when we were doing the B-roll, this bike is a downhill bike. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one, the newest bike in the lineup for Specialized, the Levo SL, which is 160 at the front, 150 at the rear. It's got the new 1.2 motor, which has 50 Nm of torque and the 320 watt internal battery. And it's coming in in the S-Works at 17.7 kilos. Now, first off, Young Gun, how'd you get on? I like this bike a lot. It was definitely different than the other two. It felt more like a trail bike. It's still an SL. It's much lighter than the, than the Levo. So it felt light like this one, but much snappier, much more playful. I can move the bike around much more. So that's also like kind of style like for bike parks and other kinds of riding. So I really like this bike, how it felt moving around the trails. Power? The power was definitely enough. It was a little bit more than, than, the, than the Kinevo SL. So I think uh, for my type of riding, I could use a little bit more, but I definitely liked it a little bit more than the Kinevo SL, the power wise. Best and worst? Best, the, 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 what I was talking about, the snappy feel, how you could like slap into a turn. It's really playful, it's really nimble. And the worst, maybe the, the, the Geo. I like the Geo better on this one. I'm more used to a bigger bike. So maybe that'd be the worst for me. Probably the longer chain stand, the 29ers. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what about you, veteran? Oh my God, this is amazing. This bike is amazing. It's pretty much like my current bike, but with better suspension, with the motor, it's so good. It's, it's more quiet than the Kinevo one. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and, and it, the finally uh, you, you um, notice the, the more power. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. And the more torque, I think. Yeah. The torque. Yeah. And what did you think, uh, what about the power of the motor and the range? How did you find that? I think maybe is the, the range is a little, a little bit less. Than the Kinevo yeah. SL. Yes, yep. a little bit less. It's like, but not much, it's maybe two, three yeah. percent less. I've and been doing a lot of uh, testing. And the interesting thing is you rode both these bikes in trail most of the time. Yeah, yeah, most of the time. And the Levo and yeah, Turbo. Yeah, yeah, it's curious. Which it's is curious. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the Levo inside you to, to go faster yeah, yeah. Uh, i mainly use trail mode in both yeah yeah i on this bike i always use 100 percent peak power and 50 percent support uh -huh. and that kind of just helps it go uh best and worst thing about this bike yeah the the best thing is the feeling it's feel it doesn't feel like a new bike but it's more planted yeah you know it's, it's like a, a mix of the of both worlds is you have the, the the best things of the normal bikes and the best thing of, of any bike, it's the finally uh, it's uh, carry more speed in flat sections, yeah. much more speed. Yeah. And but in the other side, you have the motor going uphill. That's yeah. Kind of, Perfect. Uh, kind of of a help. All right. So now it's my turn to talk about the Lever SL. But first, how do we reckon the riders are styled here? A bit of sand spike style, the the glasses and the shirt. We might be starting a little club. Who wants a jersey? We might be selling them soon. Anyway, back to the Lever SL. So done about 300Ks on this bike. Absolutely love this bike. I'm gonna say it's a bit of an anxious e-bike. It just wants to get rowdy. Best suspension I think I've ever tried. It's, it ramps up like it's super plush off the top. It ramps up and it, it's like 160, 150 and it feels like that. But then when it gets into the chunk, it feels like more than that. So it ramps up 
One thing I am gonna say is it's 17 kilos, and I've gone from the full power electric mountain bike back to this, and this feels like I'm going back to the analog days. Like, I'm a little bit like more sketchy on this bike. It's not as planted, and I think you need to be a better rider on this to ride it as fast as you ride that one. And range-wise, I have done a range test. You can check it out in the show notes. The range on the Kineva SL is a little bit better. Best and worst on this bike, I'd say the best is suspension and probably the worst is the weight <laughs> being a bit too light for me at the moment. I think I need to get better on the bike. And lucky last, the Levo Gen 3, which I've been on for the last two years, done over 4,000 Ks. I love this bike. It is 160 at the front, 150 at the back, rolling on mullet wheels, and it's got the Bros Mag S motor with 90 Nm meters of torque and a whopping 700 watt hour battery. Now, first off, Martin, how'd you get on? I freaking love this bike. It was the first bike I tried. Coming from my analog bike to a full power was, was mind blowing, was amazing. I usually ride maybe once if I'm lucky twice a week. And with this one, I was riding every day, man, so. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw the photos. Exactly. And that something really that I found really interesting, like Martin was a duck to water with the weight. So like his commensal was like 19 kilos. Almost, yeah. This one fully specced up with the Schwabby tires. Uh, it's probably like 23, 23 and a half. And you were flying like the first, you know, the first day when we shot the B-roll, you know, like it was really interesting. And, and you were saying about how planted you almost felt more secure on the bike. I really did. I think it's, I think it's down to the weight and how you were saying how planted I felt. You could just pick a line and the bike would, would, would follow through. So I really liked it. I also enjoyed the, uh, the mullet wheels being a heavier bike. It's planted, but getting the shorter, the smaller wheel in the back, you could really flick it around corners. Yeah. So I really, really enjoyed this bike. Yeah, and power of the motor and range. The range was amazing. I could never uh, drain a battery charge, and the the power is more than enough for me. It was it was really good going uphill. Best and worst. The best, I would say the best feeling, I felt really natural. We were saying how like down to the ground, how planted it was. I felt really secure from the get go, and maybe the worst. I would say the sizing maybe was a little bit smaller for me than the other bike and I had to adapt more to it. Yeah, 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 definitely when we go on sizing, obviously we're different sizes here. Pablo is on the shorter end, Martin's on the higher end and obviously we're, like, we've only got the S4s to test. So probably size-wise, the Kineva SL is That'll more size. your size. And onto Pablo, the mountain goat. How did you get on? This bike is so capable. Is amazing. Is he can mm, climb into walls, it's dude. You scared us so much. <laughs> We've got it. We'll show it right now on the B-roll. How crazy was that, Martin? Like it was like like this. It was completely vertical. Yeah. He thought he was going backwards, but he only went up. <laughs> Man, it's so easy. You just have to put a good position in the bike and, and pedal. But your background is motorbike as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So how did you find? How did you find the motor? How did you find the range? What? The motor is incredible. It's not just powerful, uh, it's so manageable because you can go even in turbo. If you, can, if you put the right amount of power into the, the cranks, you won't uh, slip the back tire. Yeah. If you learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah. The so, track is kind of almost got traction yeah. control. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you go full on, it's like a motorbike. <laughs> I used to say that it's like a trial bike with a 450 motor inside. I always say it to the, the new mountain bike is like the SO is definitely closer to the analog riding yeah. and the full power, it's still mountain biking, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as much fun going up as it is going yeah, down. It's, the, the, it's very curious. I use turbo in this bike. And, then, and trail in these two. Yeah, yeah, in trail in these two because it's inside you to go fast. It's, when you're going uphill, you have to pick the lines like if you're going in on a motorbike, not yeah. in, in, in a bicycle. Yeah, and I, I do it and I, I don't even know if it's the right term, but I, I call it clutch braking. Yeah. So I'm going around the corner, I keep the power on, but I'm braking with yeah, the brakes yeah, yeah, to yeah. keep it from the motor like yeah. bogging down. Yeah. So best and worst? Best uh, is a versatile. You yeah. can go with your buddies with non bikes, you're just going eco or without the motor on. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go with uh, with your full power bikes, uh, bodies with no problem, can handle everything. It goes down amazing, it's, it's, it's flawless. Yeah. And the best part, uh, I can see nothing bad, for real. Okay, perfect, my turn. So as I said, I've been on the Levo Gen 3 
for two years, about 4,000 Ks. Absolutely love this bike, it's an absolute beast. 160, 150, but it's not really a trail bike. I say it's like a trail duro bike with that six-way geometry. Well, all the bikes have six-way geometry changes, but for me, it's just a super capable bike. And at 22 or 23 kilos, it doesn't feel like a heavy bike to ride. It kind of, I don't know how they did it, but the weight really does disappear on the trail. And I know that sounds like me doing marketing spiel, but it's not, I don't feel that many negatives to riding this to these two out on the trail. So let's take it now to that next level. And we'll start with you, Pablo. How do we compare? So these are obviously SLs. How do we compare the full power electric mountain bike to SLs? And who do you think they're for? Like what type of rider? Um, definitely uh, the, the Livo Gen 3, it's for everyone. Everyone, yep. no matter your, is your feet or not, or whatever. The SLs, you need to be fitter, yep. obviously. Yep. And what about you, Martin? I would agree with that. And also depends your style of riding. If you like, if you like a, a lighter bike and you're used to more analog bike, you're doing more bike park, I think maybe that would not be your bike. And if you're doing more bike park, you like a more nimble feel, I would choose one of these two. Yeah, I mean, me checking in with the jumping on these all these bikes, when you get it wrong on a full powered electric mountain bike, you know about it. Yep, <laughs> you if definitely you, know about if it. If you come short, you're like, you're bending wheels, like you need to get the jumping right. But also these things take off because of the weight behind them, they jump so well. These bikes feel much more like an analog bike. Yeah. And I think when it comes to SL, I think you need to be a fitter rider. And what you're saying about the style of riding, like Martin and I, there's no hiding it. We like to go downhill and like, I don't really like to ride at the top that much. I ride up to go down. <laughs> exactly. Where I think Pablo more likes a bit of everything. Yeah. And this is a big one for you riders out there and for the virgins. A lot of newbies to e-biker think their fitness is gonna suffer. How did you find the month? Because you normally ride a lot. Yeah. The month on these e-bikes, how do you think it, like did your fitness suffer or did you get fitter? How did you find it? Uh, nothing at all, nothing at all. I, I was a bit worried. Yep. But, mm, Nothing at all. Um, I've been riding a couple of times between rides with the e-bikes just to, to check. And I realized that I'm the same or maybe better because I've been riding more. Yeah. You know, and what I realized is that the kind of uh, workout is different yep. because you're not just working your your legs, you're working all your, your body, you have to be uh, more, more strength in, in yep. your upper body. Yeah, you're, you're definitely uh, sure the, the day after the riding. Yeah. And what about you, Martin? I definitely agree with Pablo. I'm gonna say that I, I'm like Sam. I don't like to pedal that much. We're definitely not the fittest, like like Pablo. But um, I think I got even fitter because it comes down to how many days you're riding per week. And I basically got out much more than I would on my normal bike. So I think my lower body. Uh, it was definitely easier going up, but I could go longer, so I ended up getting a better workout. And as Pablo saying, your upper body definitely uh, takes more of a beating. You're moving a heavier bike around. There's more forces into it, and you definitely feel it more. So I would say all around, my fitness got better. Yep. Well, me now, four years on an e-bike, and probably five kilos heavier. No, just joking. Uh, well, I think the fitness doesn't get affected, but a lazy rider can be a lazy rider on a mountain bike, on an e-bike, on whatever, you know? Yes. So uh, what I find is really helpful, uh, especially if you wanna go in like a fat burning zone, is you can regulate your heart rate with the motor. So you can go in micro tune, which is like 10 to 100%, kind of like a treadmill, and you can go, okay, I wanna keep my heart rate like 130, okay? And then uh, your heart rate goes to 160, which is not good for fat burning. You lift the assistance up on the motor, and it's really good for that. But one thing I have noticed when I've run out of battery is my leg strength has suffered a little bit because you're not putting as much power, like you're not getting that brute power through the pedals as you would with an analog bike. Now, riders, I hope you're still there because we're gonna let you know which our favorite bikes are very shortly. But I thought because these guys have been riding the absolute Rolls Royce of e-bikes, the S-Works, the carbon everything, I thought we'd ask, you guys, how you got on with carbon wheels, frame, handlebars, if you liked it, if you think it's worth it. Pablo, take it away. Yeah, the first bike I, I tried was a Kinevo. 
and I've never uh, ridden a bike all carbon, uh, rims, frame, everything. Uh, at the beginning, I felt a, a little bit harsh. Yeah, that what I I felt. Uh, but once I've been getting used to the the, the feeling, is um, I realize why they are the best of the best, because uh, the, the the handling is amazing. You can push mar much harder than with a normal bike. You, you didn't uh, feel that uh, that rear wheel bending in a in a in a in a turn when you're yeah. pushing hard. You know, there are some things that. Honestly, I don't feel that much like the the, the handlebars. I don't yep. feel that much, but just the, the and one thing you're finally noticing is is the the, the weight. The weight, the definitely. Weight. Yeah. What about you? Well, I really like them. It's the first carbon anything I ride. Uh, I've never had uh, any, anything carbon. It's always been alloy, and I really liked it. It is true that it's more harsh, more stiff. You can definitely feel it when you come from your normal bike to everything carbon. But I think it's a compromise that really pays off because something I felt too is reliability. I've been riding these bikes really hard for, for the past uh, month and my wheel is still super straight every single ride, which I think for me, I don't have to be touching it or adjusting it, which is really good. And also acceleration. If you're going to bike park or a trail with a lot of turns, the carbon rims definitely like speed out much more than the alloy. Just dig in, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Obviously I've been riding these bikes for like the last two years now. And it was my first, no, my second carbon frame I'd had, I think. And I really wasn't a fan of carbon handlebars and carbon wheels. I thought they'd break. They actually scared me to start with. And I actually went to the point of changing the wheels to aluminium. And after speaking to a lot of riders, I said, dude, what are you doing? You've got like the top of the line wheels there, put them on your bike. And I was like, I'm scared. But I've done like, I reckon like 2000 Ks on the Levo now. I haven't broken them and they're still straight. Martin had a good crack at breaking them last week. He couldn't break them. I haven't actually seen, I've never broken one. So, and uh, feeling wise, I definitely think they're sharper. Like, like maybe it's not as comfortable as aluminum, but it's like a sharper sort of feeling like it's more dynamic when you turn, like there's that split second where the bike just turns faster. Yes. And I, th I prefer carbon, but yeah, it comes at a price and that's just what it is. Okay, now down to the million dollar question. If Specialized, we're gonna give you, Pablo, one of these bikes, just to make clear they're not going to, uh, <laughs> which one would you choose and why? Well, uh, I think a lot about that. Uh, but I think I would choose uh, the Libo itself. Interesting, yeah, yeah. why? Yeah. Because uh, as I said before, it's, uh, the feeling is like, my my current bike but it's much better and with the motor you you can enjoy the ride from the start to finish yeah with this bike yeah perfect okay perfect happy with that what about you martin uh, i've thought about this a lot and i think it's been changing throughout the the testing i really have to move my, my mind up but i would go with the kinevo sl i think it's more the type of riding i do i do a lot of bike park i like more travel i like to go as fast as I possibly can. And this bike really did that for me. So I think if I could only have one bike, I'm definitely going for this one. Okay, sweet, sweet. That doesn't surprise me because a lot of the riders that you ride with are riding analog bikes as well. Yes, exactly. So like something we didn't say about the Levo SL, uh, like the, the lightweights and the full power, is it really comes down to who you're riding with. If you're riding on your own, like you can, have a great time on any of these bikes but if you're riding with full power electric mountain bike group it really depends and it really depends on your fitness pablo can do it i don't think i can personally do it i definitely can't so now down to me now i'm really lucky i don't have to choose so lucky me i love the kineva sl i think the kineva sl for me is a bike park it's a big mountain bike also i think it comes into its element when you're really going fast and pushing the limits more like what he was doing and I find that for me, it's a little bit scary because this bike is so capable. Also, I don't think it has enough power for me. The Levo SL, fantastic bike. Absolutely love it. The bike, it's, it is the best suspension platform I've tried. The thing is like just dynamic and awesome. Love it. But 
it all comes down to who you ride with. And all my friends have full powered electric mountain bikes. I'm gonna say if I could only pick one bike, it would be the Levo Gen 3. And riders, thank you so much for watching. You legend riders, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And I was hoping with this, you know, each rider that's watching this can resonate with a different style, like younger, fitter, more like an, you know, a veteran e-biker. So that's what we're trying to do. Hope you liked it, riders. Subscribe to the channel, stay safe out there. And like always, if you've got any questions for any of us, put them down in the comments and we'll get back to you. And stay safe and we'll see you then.